Hey friends, David Ashley Willis here, and we have a very, very significant episode of the Naked Marriage Podcast. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can see that we're not in the studio right now. We're doing a quick intro outside the studio to let you know what you're about to see. About a month ago, our dear friends, Steve and Susie Swanson, who you're gonna meet in this episode, came here to the EXO studio, and we were honored to do an interview with them. It's something we'd wanted to do for a long time. And it was a wonderful interview. We talked primarily about caring for aging parents, which is something that they, they do, but also they share so many amazing life lessons Steve. from their uh, over 40 years of marriage. And it's just, uh, it's an incredible gift what they're gonna share. But this episode is so profound now because what we did not know a month ago when this was recorded is that Steve was about to be diagnosed with terminal pancreatic cancer. The week after this, interview was recorded. He was diagnosed with that cancer and he very quickly went downhill. And two nights ago, our dear friend and mentor, Steve Swanson, went home to be with Jesus. He died peacefully, uh, just looking forward to being in the loving arms of his heavenly father. And our prayers are with Susie and his kids, Luke and Shireen. Um, but this is, uh, it's truly an honor to be able to share his last interview with you. It is, as you will learn from this interview, which is really only a snippet of who Steve and Susie really are, but you will you will see what wonderful people they are, and Steve in particular, just over the years, uh, I wanna say we were trying to remember how long he's been our friend and mentor, but around 17 years or so, he's been our friend and mentor, and these are people that we got to know at our church and that have poured into our life. We would go to one of our favorite restaurants in town and talk about you know, all different as aspects of life and just really learn from them. There's some of those people that we've talked about here on this podcast that we have learned from. And uh, and we've just tremendously, I mean, they've just impacted our, our life. And Steve in particular has always been one of those guys that is just so thoughtful and it really yeah. challenges us to be that, that thoughtful friend. You know, on a weekly basis, he would text Dave, with uh, sometimes it'd be a funny meme about marriage, and most of the time though it'd be some profound thing he'd read, or you know, and, and it's just it's just amazing the kind of legacy he is leaving behind. And as you listen to this interview, I just not only am excited to to just introduce these amazing people to you and what you can learn from them, but I want you to think about legacy yourself because I think all of us can learn a lot from Steve, and I'm gonna get choked up, but. Steve lived his life for the Lord. And I, I can truly say that I think he went to see Jesus with no regrets because every day he lived to love others. When we were at their house the other day, I'm an ugly crier, I'm sorry, you guys. We were at the house the other day. His son, um, who we, we've met before, um, his name is Luke. Uh, he got really teared up and he, we were just talking about Steve and how much we love Steve and different memories we had about him and funny stories and profound things he taught us. And he teared up and he said, you know, he goes, I knew my dad had a lot of friends, but I didn't realize that he had so many deep friendships. And he said, I don't know how he even found the time. He goes, how did he find the time? And it just challenged me, it challenged Dave, that we need to find the time. We're yeah. never guaranteed tomorrow. We never know when we're gonna go. We never know when we might be diagnosed or, or something tragic happened. And so we need to be challenged to live like Steve, to live like it's our last day, to love like it's our last day and to just, just spread the love of Jesus with, with every minute that we're given on this earth. Well said, well said. So friends, I want you to, uh, to enjoy, because Steve would want you to enjoy. This is not a sad episode. And he's really fun too. He is so, so fun, is yeah. he is so fun, and he is laughing joyfully in heaven right now. And, mm -hmm. and he would want you to laugh and enjoy this. So Susie, uh, we love you. Thank you so love much you. for sharing your wisdom in this episode. Steve, can't wait to see you in heaven someday, my friend. Yes. And to all you watching and listening, enjoy this uh, very important, meaningful conversation with two of our favorite people on earth. Hello and welcome back to the Naked Marriage Podcast. We are Dave and Ashley Willis. And on this podcast, we address the truth about sex, intimacy, and lifelong love. And you guys, if you're watching on YouTube, you see we have two amazing people in studio, and they are dear friends and mentors of ours, and Dave is going to tell you all about them. I'm so excited about today, and I know I say that pretty much every episode, much. but exactly. I, <laughs> I really extra mean it today, <laughs> because we've been wanting, 
legitimately wanting and planning to interview Steven Sue forever. Swanson forever. Yes. And but we wanted to do it in studio. We live mm -hmm. we we all live in Georgia. The studio's in Dallas. It's a bit of a commute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we found a way to all get here and I'm so thankful they came straight from the airport. Yep. And uh, they are such a gift. They they uh, spent their lives in ministry, raised two amazing kids. Yep. Uh, now they're loving on the grandkids and also caring for aging parents, which is a topic we're going to focus on today is that that delicate and sometimes complicated balance of, of just caring for aging parents. It's yes. a topic we've never explored. There's so many things we could talk to them about where we're going to focus on that. Uh, they spent years in Christian radio, um, mm -hmm. you know, recently managing the local Christian station in our town, yes. which is a gift, a gift to our whole uh, city and community. And, and even beyond that, they're so well known and respected. I could spend all 30 minutes just doing their intro because they're <laughs> so don't. kind. Su <laughs> Susie makes the best cookies I've ever had. Well, and uh, <laughs> we, we love getting with them for lunch. And they're just those folks that when you hang out with them, you feel w wiser and more loved and more encouraged just right. for having been you with them. Better. You leave better. They leave people better. Wow. And so they're, encourage you. So they're yes, going to. I'm totally encouraged. They're going to leave you better. So you <laughs> listen right. to this episode, That's watch right. this episode. I promise you'll be better for having spent some time with the Swansons. So Steve and Susie, we love you. Welcome. Thank Welcome. you. Welcome. Thank you it's good to for be having here. us. It has been an effort. You, <laughs> but you, it's, worth, it's worth it. No, yes. no, but like it's quite yes. You made a lot of effort. You came literally straight from this the airport. Morning, Three a.m. They woke up, just and they're to be here. and they're here, guys. They're here for you. They did this so that you guys could hear what you're about to hear. Yes. So, welcome. Well, mm -hmm. so we start out. We every time we have a couple on, we always ask the same first question. Tell us how you met and and when was that because you guys have been married for a little even though you both look remarkably young it's been a while since you got married yes so tell us about that origin story well i can tell you first of all that we're almost 46 years married a couple of weeks oh, away from amazing oh, and happy early anniversary and yes. susie can tell you how we met yes awesome. so she was there <laughs> we met at lutheran bible institute in uh -huh. seattle steve had flown across the country he had been there already a quarter and i came in winter quarter and um, i was with my girlfriend judy and we were sitting in the cafeteria and steve worked in the cafeteria and he came over to just talk with us and you know did his little diddly and he had like a maroon coat that he would shove the sleeves up on and the little <laughs> elf hat and why do you call it an elf hat <laughs> it didn't have a little feather had a green. little feather oh, yeah. i can yeah. picture it yeah yes. I, I can totally picture it yeah yes yeah. and so i wore basically whatever was clean right right that's yeah, what i wore totally <laughs> yes so we're sitting and talking and he leaves and I just go to my friend Judy and I said, you know what? I said, I am so going to stay away from this guy. Why did you want to stay away from him? I don't know. I just thought he was really weird. <laughs> <laughs> and now she knows. Now she knows. It didn't so, take long to find that out, I guess. Yeah. Now, did, but, he, did he have, though, did he have the, the like amazing voice back then, too? Or exactly. Is he that's, into this? that's exactly it. He would lead worship sometimes in the evenings with his friend Tim and I started listening to this voice and mm -hmm. just very verbally good yeah you so know. soothing it so is. yes yes <laughs> but also um his friend Tim and and Steve had a we had a class where we had to do a verbal kind of uh, like speech class yeah like a okay. speech class yeah. Yeah. Oral presentation. Yeah. But yeah. Steve and Tim did theirs, and it was so phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And I was supposed to go next, and I just took the bad grade. I didn't even say anything. I wouldn't go up there. I just you, said, like, I can't follow. I can't that. follow this act. So yeah, it's, <laughs> she like, forgot it's to like, mention that I followed her around like a puppy it, everywhere after we met. It, yeah. And that was part of the reason why she went, oh. Maybe I should pay attention. Yeah, yes. this guy's pursuing. Well, and it wasn't he just listened. the one time he mm -hmm. came over and said hi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I you you locked in on her and you were like, I did. I'm going to get to know this girl. Yep. Yeah. We had long walks, long conversations. The, the mm -hmm. pursuit thing, guys, for you single guys that are listening, the the whole art of of pursuit, mm -hmm. not stalking, but pursuit. That's exactly. Right. It's, it's a lost a art, right, and and right. so many guys they just they don't put in the effort. Mm -hmm. You know, they say, you know, hi to a girl once and then and then they, they they're like, well, I guess I guess she doesn't like me. And then they never talk to her again, even though. So, guys, listen, learn from the wisdom That's of right. 
of Steve here and pursue, just pursue. Mm -hmm. I mean, I practically stalked Ashley. I mean, I really you, did. You did. You were not creepy about it, but you did like not creepy, you found, but <laughs> persistent. You know, he found present. ways. You were present. Yes. You know, and we were. We met. When find we were ways going to, to be where, well. where she is, and just well, you would find ways to like see to spend time with me basically yes find ways. probably what you did too yes. that's right? what you find steve ways. did and then yep. keep yes. doing that after you're married yes, keep exactly. pursuing mm -hmm. keep finding ways to exactly. be around each other as you guys do you spend like you've been married for almost 46 years but i would say you just in your dynamic you've spent you've spent more time physically together working together doing life together yes. just sharing mm -hmm. hobbies sharing life together mm -hmm. Than, than most couples if they'd been married for a hundred years. Their whole lifetime. Uh, and and that's, a, that's a gift. I think sometimes, you know, you run these couples and they've been married for a long time, but you realize that whole time they've had completely separate lives. They may not be together. Yeah, they're not, right. they're not together. Physically, yeah. you know, married technically, but, you know, he does his thing, she does her thing, and they're, they're together an hour a week. Mm -hmm. You guys really, really do life together, and I think that's, that's just... That's something that we've always looked up to. Yeah. It? We yeah. knew it would be an adventure, and it has been. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And, and it continues to be. It continues yes. to. It yeah. continues to be here. Well, before we we jump into um, the aging parents thing, brag on your grandkids for a second because oh, you're yes. amazing. Oh, sure. I love hearing grandparents. Talk about you want to start on the grandkids? And you, you go ahead. Because, All right. Because they love their bomba. There are six their of them. Bompa. Yes. Bompa. Each bompa. of our kids has three, mm -hmm. and their ages are starting at fifteen. Mm -hmm. Wow. Fifteen, twelve, ten, nine, seven, and five. Oh. Wow. And they each have two girls and a boy. Mm -hmm. And they live outside of Atlanta, which is a couple hours, two to three hours away from us. And we see them at least once a month yeah. intentionally. Yes. Yeah. And we volunteer, of course, like a lot of grandparents do, to watch the kids while mom and dad are away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We just uh, spent four days with our five-year-old. Mm -hmm. so she's still recovering from that. She is, yeah. she is <laughs> she's a, a little pogo stick. She is a she pogo is. stick. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. The Very energy. excited. Yes. And what do we do next? But and remind us what next. they call you, because I love grandparent Bom names. Bompa. 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 Yes. It supposedly uh, is a French uh, terminology meaning good papa. I love which it. Which we like didn't it. know. Lila couldn't say grandpa, so it came out Bompa. And, and, and that's so beautiful. And that's she, stuck, so. she speaks French. Who knew? Yeah. And she's exactly. Brilliant. It's Bompa. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> and Mimi. And Mimi. And Mimi, Mimi yeah. and Bompa. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. We're still, so you know. I, I always um, thought of the name Squishy Grandma. And, and Jason, my son-in-law, said, I don't think I'd follow that one. <laughs> he said, that's just a little too much. Yeah. <laughs> so Back to Mimi. Me, you're a great it. Mimi, a great bumpa. I love it. Oh, we yes. love our grandkids. And the age span is wonderful. Yes. yes. One just got, in fact, for the first time just a few weeks ago, my oldest grandson drove to his friend's house oh. with me in the passenger seat. That's so like, cool. okay, that's a new experience. It but is. But it was fun. It wow. is. And then we're out on the trampoline with our five year olds. So mm -hmm. they keep you young they and do. wear you out at the same time. Yep. I I love it. Yeah. It's good. Yes. It's I, so I can sweet. relate to that. My uh <laughs> which my, part? Well oh, all, my, all my eight year old <laughs> just turned nine. That's right. The other day said uh he was like, I don't know where he came up with this, but I laughed as hard as I laughed <laughs> in a long time. We were playing, he said, Dad, are you tired? And I'm like, I don't know, maybe a little. Well, why do you ask? And he said, Well, you're 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 just kind of old to have a kid my age. <laughs> Oh. Well, all of his friends, like he's the youngest, and so like yeah. all of his his friends' dads are all like a little younger than me, and so well, he happens he befriended like and the I've, friends that he has are all firstborns of their gotcha. family, okay. most yeah. of them, and so their parents are younger because like we were the young parents with Cooper, our oldest, who's yeah. you know almost. But now 19. our youngest is ten years younger than our exactly. oldest, and so I'm like That's ten so years funny. older than a lot of his friends' dads, or I, at least because there was uh, one of his friends. The dad is 29, and I was like, yeah. I'm feeling real old right now. I could right be now. his dad. I'm 42, I'm like, almost 43. I'm 45. <laughs> now, when you have grandkids, you ask them how old they think old is. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's fun. Yeah. It's real fun. Yeah, it's fun. Oh, I got, you know, they look at the sky for a minute and kind of look around and go, I think 40. Yeah, that's yeah. Like 40. Ancient. 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 Yeah. That's yeah. like, you know, almost respirator stuff, you know. <laughs> I know, right? And You're they like, say, how old are you? Yeah. Like, hey, let's old, play cars. Older yes. than that. <laughs> Well, speaking of I speaking of old, oh, oh, that's a nice yeah. segue, yeah. Into, yes. segue sweetie. into the the topic. You guys have a lot of longevity in your families. Mm -hmm. We're blessed that way. You know, you're yep. both gonna, I believe, blow a hundred candles out on your cake someday. Yes. And um, but with with age and with longevity yeah. comes um, just the the multi generational family dynamic of figuring out like, okay, well, how do we protect our parents' independence as much as they want to be independent while exactly. also caring for their needs. Um, it, 
and that is a that's a road that many are listening and they're navigating. That's why they're listening. They're like, you know, get to the nuts and bolts. We we're trying to figure out how to yes. do this mm-hmm. in a way to honor our parents. Um, we we don't know like do we let them live with us? Do we do we help help them stay independent? Do we mm-hmm. try to get them in a home? What do we do when they don't want to do that? How do you navigate when? when they're saying, no, I want to keep driving and they can't see the road in front of them. I mean, exactly. there are so many big questions here that people aren't talking about. And yet I think it, these are some of the most significant mm-hmm. decisions um, that a married couple will make. And how yes. do we care for and support our aging parents, which is a biblical mandate, honor your parents and you know care for them. But what that actually looks like practically, um, I don't think it's a one size fits all because of the unique dynamic and personality of, of every aging person, of every mm-hmm. couple as they yes. care for them. So I just want to step back and defer to you guys because you've you've done this. You mm-hmm. continue to do this. You're learning as you go and That's you're right. you're doing it with such dignity and honor. And we want to learn from your example as our own parents, um, you know, someday yeah. will maybe need our support in the way that you're supporting your parents now. And uh, we just want to talk about it. So kind of give us the dynamic of where things are now and what you're learning. Yeah. You want me to give you just a kind of the overview? Sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. I would start with the fact that having aging parents is a season, mm-hmm. yeah. just like a lot of seasons in your life and marriage. The fact that every dynamic with them is different mm-hmm. because of age and because of health issues and because of proximity and that you do learn as you grow yeah. and as you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, Susie's mom is 95. She'll, She'll be 96 in April. Wow. Mm-hmm. Lives by herself in Seattle. An amazing woman. Yes. She's so yes. sweet. There's a distance mm-hmm. issue there. Sure. Yes. My dad is 94. Yeah, still driving. Still mm-hmm. living in his own home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sue's dad uh, died about 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. Almost 10 years exactly. Almost 10. And then uh, my mom died about two and a half years ago. So mm-hmm. we yeah. each have one parent. Mm-hmm. They're living on their own. They're at home. We know that's different than a lot of folks situation. I have to remind myself that my dad's 94. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was with him at Christmas time. He's still driving. Oh yeah. It's and wild. Drove yeah. all the way down from Illinois to just last to year. To South Carolina. South yeah. Carolina to yes. hang out with you 900 guys. 900 miles, you know. Yes. But dad, are you okay? I said, I'll be happy to ride with you. I like to drive. That's well, amazing. and just a little story with that. He yeah. was, we thought maybe he'd be a week, two weeks or something, visit, you know. Last yeah, last year when he came down in January. And it ended up being 40 days and 40 nights. So, <laughs> the Noah visit. Yeah, so yeah. we do call it the Noah visit. And he is so easy mm-hmm. and just, you know, really wants to do whatever we want to do and so on. But you do have to have that patience and ev- really every fruit of the spirit you will definitely need. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and... With my mom, she's um, 95 and at home, but she's been falling a lot too. Yeah, so she's which has been a challenge. I was going to say her age is higher than her weight. Oh wow! Yeah, because she's only 92 pounds. Yeah, she's very tiny now. What is that dynamic like when you first realize that your your relationship with your parent is now flipping for the first time in your life, where you're the caregiver, you're the Mm -hmm. in in essence kind of taking on that parent role of being the, the caregiver. You always honor them as your parents, of course. Right. But I imagine that that's a huge shift yes. and adjustment for, for everybody. And just what did that transition look like? It feels gradual and instantaneous at the same time. Okay. Really? Yeah. I mm-hmm. think for Susie, or, and it's different for both of us because my dad is Mr. Independent. Mm-hmm. If he's not well, he'll drive to the hospital. He'll tell you the next day, oh, yeah. by the way, I went to the hospital. <laughs> wow. Five hours away in Rochester. Yeah, I drove <laughs> oh my goodness. almost 300 miles to go to the hospital. Yes. So, and then he'll fill you in. I have three other siblings. Okay. Uh, one is in a assisted living, mm-hmm. but two others that live in the area. So there's an extra dynamic there. Mm-hmm. Susie has a sister out there, but Susie and her mom are very close, mm-hmm. and they talk every day on the phone. My dad, I can check in a couple times a week. Mm-hmm. Daddy, okay, we're great. Catch me up. Well, I guess that's it. All is well. Yes. Susie's mom, on the other hand, very detailed yes. about her life. And her yes. Day. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So there's no short phone calls with her. Yeah. No. And this is mom approved. I mean, I went ahead and sure. wrote some things out and I just said, I want to make sure that I'm not stepping on toes or, yeah. you know, bringing things up. But with my mom, she now has um, a caregiver mm-hmm. and Part she's time. there part-time eight until one okay and we're looking for this lady and it's getting to the end of my visit 
and I know that I'm needing to find someone. And I finally- It's not easy, by the way. No, it's not hard at all to find someone to come into the home. Mm -hmm. And I finally just said, Lord, I said, I need an angel, Mm -hmm. an angel from heaven. I, you know, you can do that. You have angels all around you. You can just bring one down. They'd have the time. They'd have the caringness, you know, all that. And we found someone like that. Mm-hmm. Michelle is just phenomenal That's great. with my mom. And, you know, always um, is so kind and just respectful. takes respectful, takes care of all her needs. So awesome. really yeah. pray for an angel or the best of the best for your you know, mom or dad, if they need that kind of help yeah. and and be their advocate. Yes. You know, definitely step in for them when you well, need yeah, to. It's really similar to when you're you've got young children at home yes. and yes. when you've got to find caregiver for them, a babysitter. Mm-hmm. You want somebody, of course, that's going to love them and protect them and, mm-hmm. and exactly. honor them. And um, and it's, right. you know, when your parents are aging, I'm sure it's it's like that same same kind of. It would be because, Priority. you know, they're some of the most important people in your life. And so you're, mm-hmm. you want someone who will be loving and caring. And I think, too, like in the news, sometimes we hear about these horrible elder abuse cases where yes. these workers are taking advantage. Maybe they didn't physically harm the person they were supposed to be taking care of, but they didn't take care of them well or they took money or they brainwashed neglected. them. Or, mm-hmm. Right, neglected them. And, and I know I think a lot of times people – you know, they, they, that's all they see, and they don't know about these good stories where you can find these people that God has placed exactly. you know, in their life who have gifts in these areas to really care for the elderly and really feel called to care for the elderly. And so it's good to hear stories like that because it's hard. You know, you mentioned that you live far away. I mean, mm-hmm. exactly. Both, across the both country. Of us, yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. But you both are so um, but intentional you're about yeah. making sure you're, you're there for them when yes. they need you. Exactly. I do want to mention, too, that both of our folks are God-fearing, Jesus-loving, yes. Yes. praying people, mm-hmm. which is a huge gift to us because we yes. know they pray for us every day. Yeah, right. absolutely. And we see their faith lived out in relationships, even now, influencing right. others. Susie's mom still has a prayer group that meets every Friday at their house. They call oh. it Fellowship. What are there, 12 to 15? 15, mm-hmm. That yes. meet every Friday. Probably average age of 85 or so. I love it. That is heroes. Heroes. But when heroes you're in the, the room I mean, with them, cool is that? I feel like a spiritual pygmy. I'm not kidding. Wow. They believe in prayer. We they call them the seasoned it. saints. The seasoned yeah. oh, saints. Season yeah. saints. I want to be a seasoned saint. Oh, I yeah. know. Yeah, they truly cool, live you know? out their faith and believe that God is hearing them and answering them and is present with them. Mm-hmm. And that really sustains both our folks. Mm-hmm. My dad is very much an other-centered person. He goes on visits to homes. I mean, it's hilarious. I have to remind myself, wait a minute. <laughs> or up to the hospital. Yeah, they're 78. Dad's 94. He's <laughs> yeah. driving to the hospital to visit. He's visiting the 80-year-old wow. like, son, yes. are you feeling okay? You know, like <laughs> exactly. meeting every morning with a group of guys at a circular table at a restaurant connected to a, a grocery store in his hometown. I call them the Cowboys, the mm-hmm. Circle of Wisdom Boys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're probably, average age there is probably upper 70s or so. Yeah. He's by far the oldest. They respect him, they listen to him, and he just thrives on interacting and feeding wow. good things into other people. And Man. they're not all Christians, so not it's, yet. Right. Yeah, it's really it's good for him to Both them, be able yeah. to share his faith. Well, I mean, that's just Gosh. a that's a good commentary on life. That I was just going to say, and on longevity. Need. Yeah, yeah. 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 Never, yes. never stop never ministering, stopping. never stop never building stop. relationships, that's right. mm-hmm. being intentional in and that way. And having purpose, because they both mm-hmm. have that purpose in and all the things they do, you know, like you're never too old to have purpose here on this earth. Like God has you here for a reason. Well, and I think if you have an inbound or an in-home, inbound, Mm -hmm. in-home parent, it's really good to get a hold of their friends or family and invite them into their home and say, could you go over for a lunch and have a lunch with mom or or bring lunch over or Mm -hmm. just visit with her, but to have those connections so they're not there alone. Right. You know, and you know, before we actually kind of started this recording, we were talking about how sometimes, you know, people watching and listening are agreeing with you guys on all these things, but maybe in the back of their mind, they're like, but my siblings aren't on the same page with this. Or maybe my spouse even. Or maybe my spouse. That's Mm -hmm. even, yes, totally. What would you say to somebody? Well, I have a sister who, she always tells me she's not good with older people. So 
it makes it hard Mm -hmm. being on the other side of the country and she's the one in town because she really doesn't want to spend that time with mom Mm -hmm. and she's not gets frustrated because she gets frustrated yeah Yeah, she doesn't understand her um just because she's not like her so yeah yeah yeah, so that kind of maybe more personality than age exactly it is and patience yeah for lack thereof yeah (laughs) Yeah. so sometimes i get these calls from her and they're meltdown calls is so, what so i so susie's in the middle yes yeah sure. that's so Very hard much. yeah thousands of miles away with mom mm-hmm. and now mm-hmm. she's calling out of frustration and susie's going to be calling mom mm-hmm. and now she's getting both sides yes that's hard so how do you yeah. deal with that like that's I, I, stressful. you listen mm-hmm. you know i'm i just listen to my sister i never try to give her advice or whatever mm-hmm. i try sometimes to give her a perspective of where maybe mom's coming from mm-hmm. But um, most of the time, I just let her vent yeah. because then yeah. she'll get done and say, "Okay, I'm I'm good, good now." <laughs> yeah, good talk. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. "I'm worn right. out." Exactly. I'm glad it helped you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's wi- that's very wise. I'm I'm filing back. I'm yeah, a sister, I'm, and I, I mean, yeah. I'm filing back. I'm like, I am too. You know, because it, it's it, it's good to know that because I do think if you were being the one so far away, I mean, even though you do visit your mom regularly, right, um, and, and connect with her daily, you know, I'm sure your sister she may take it the wrong way if you're here giving advice. Exactly, so you just listening and saying I'm your sounding board here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna listen. Yeah. I'm gonna let you vent. That's that's very wise. So yeah. I have a brother and sister that are in close proximity to dad. Okay. My brother lives less than a mile away, mm-hmm. so if physically, I mean, when there's snow or whatever. He can go plow out the driveway or whatever. Mm-hmm. Loves to do that and check in on him kind of casually. He'll call him. He's uh, self-employed, so he can okay. call dad and say, how about lunch? Mm-hmm. And they get together. My sister, on the other hand, has one day a week where she just makes meals for oh, her okay. family and for dad and then delivers okay. and fills up the freezer. Wow. Very practical way. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And her gift to dad this year, again, is every month they go out to dinner. Okay. So that's a... You know, Regular. A set mm-hmm. place and a yes. set time where they share together. The last time we were all together having a dinner, uh, all three of us were kidding about putting Dad in our will, mm-hmm. thinking he might outlive <laughs> all of us. <laughs> That's great. That's he great. liked that. He yeah. thought that was great. He's yeah. like, I, I'm going strong. What are you leaving me? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, he's 94. He just I love keeps it. going. Well, what would your yeah. advice be to maybe people who are listening and were like, yeah, the, you know, the, the, the sibling dynamic, that's one thing, but in, in our marriage, mm, yeah. we're, on, mm-hmm. we're on different pages. You know, what would you suggest to folks where maybe one spouse is like, you know, I want mom to move in with us, and the other one's like, no, I want to I want to do this. They can't agree on, on, an, on a plan of action, and it's really creating a tension point in their marriage, and which it can, because these are, these are big decisions. Big decisions, um, yeah. And you, you two navigate these decisions with, you know, from what I can see, at least, I mean, so much... Mm-hmm just grace and mutual respect and all that. I mean, sure, there have been times where you've disagreed and worked through it, but but what would your advice be for those who just feel they both feel stuck, like we can't find agreement here? Mm-hmm. I think for sure to pray together. Yes. Yeah. You yeah. know, and... That's huge. We know that everyone, you know, you might even have a spouse who is not a Christian, yeah. but it's so important that you take that time to pray. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, and and to say, you know what, let's try this. Let's try this for maybe a a two month Mm -hmm. type of thing. Or and if it's not going to work, then maybe we do have to talk about putting her or him or, you know, into um, a home or assisted living or whatever. But if you can take them into your home, I think that's an awesome place to start. Now, my mom doesn't want to leave, leave her home. My dad doesn't either. Yeah. He's been yes. there, I think, 60 years <clears throat> oh, wow. in the same house. Yes. Amazing. Wow. About the same, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's yeah. very much established in this right. place. Yep. In this I mean, this is their, right. their space. You know, you know right. one suggestion that maybe no one's thought of here. I <laughs> I can hear what's coming. I'm a bit of a matchmaker. <laughs> oh, and my gosh. Would your lives not be easier <laughs> if we could <laughs> get your dad married to your mom? <laughs> wow. In the same place. Across the country, and though, then, again. again. Yeah. Yeah, I do weddings. So much alike. I do weddings. I say <laughs> exactly. We can, <laughs> we you guys can. are like we know the yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. right? Maybe uh, the maybe not right. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, you right, carry right. on. I just, just had that easy. thought. In. I know. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I th- prayer is the biggest thing. That's yes. the foundation. And the other thing is just to have the conversations. I mean, Susie has these long conversations with mom. I just disappear while she's on okay. the phone. Or yeah. Susie's mom will call him like I'm checking out. Mm-hmm. I'll go do something else for a while. 
But it's just kind of having an understanding of this is a priority. You know, it's not forever. It's not forever. We don't have our folks yeah. forever. It's so true. Mm-hmm. So cherish the time that you do have. Mm-hmm. Enjoy those conversations. Be intentional about reaching out. I'll drop my dad a card. Mm-hmm. He loves to text. Mm-hmm. My dad loves love every day. Yes. Text. Aww, Lots so of people. Awesome. And he encourages them by doing that. But we keep in touch that way. Wow. In fact, we got a text from him just a few minutes ago. So, Aww. I mean, communicate in the way that is best for them. Mm-hmm. If it's letters, if it's mm-hmm. email, if yeah. it's text. It's not usually email. They're a little bogged down in that. Mm-hmm. There's a frustration point. Trying yeah. to explain how to do something on the computer <laughs> from yeah. 2,000 Technology, miles away. yes. Wow. Yeah. I finally got the same phone that my mom, or I got my mom the same phone that I had. Okay. Yeah. So that when she had questions, it was like, okay. And I just looked at mine and said, okay, do this, do this. Right. You know, and that really helped because she had an Android and I had an Apple and <laughs> it was oh, just sounds like marriages, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. But that's so good. Like, you know, I know in our conversations we've had with you over the years, it's like really showing your parents like because I, I think where where there's fights like with the parent and the child and the grown child is when neither party feels respected. Because yes. it's like, exactly. On one end, like I was just, you know, talking with a friend the other day. It's like you know, wanting to help your, your parent or your in-law, but them not seeing that you're just trying to help. And it's like both parties aren't understanding. And I've just seen you all navigate that with just going, you know, you're, you're really so intentional about showing respect and meeting them mm-hmm. where they are. Like, that's what I hear you guys saying is like, yes. meet them where they are. They've lived on this earth a lot longer. Mm-hmm. All this new stuff may not resonate with them. You know, there might be some things that, like, I mean, your dad texting, I mean, that's awesome. He figured that yes. out and it works for him. Oh, he loves you it. Know, and, and he loves it. And it's like just finding those touch points because, you know, knowing that, that you, they want to feel connected. Like, that's mm-hmm. huge. And I, I know um, there's been all these studies about the elderly and how those that feel connected and have purpose are the ones that not only live longer, but have happier lives. Like their quality of life is better. Exactly. And I know you all, you know, and your siblings, you go out of your way to have those touch points, um, no matter if you're in the same town or not. Right. Is there anything else you would add to that to help uh, the relationship with your parent as they age be a healthy one? I think another thing is to don't put them on the spot for an answer. Like give yeah, them time. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's because good. sometimes we'll ask them a question and it's like we want an answer right then and they need to process it. Their yeah. mind isn't as sharp anymore. They're, you know, they're just not as clear. Mm-hmm. Give them time to process right. everything, you know, mm-hmm. and sometimes it can be frustrating, but it's so important yes. to be able. That's really, yeah, that's and I think sure. recognizing the fact of priority over convenience you know, they yes. may not call it the most convenient time. They may have a need mm-hmm. you didn't really feel like addressing right then. And then I would encourage folks just to stop and think about all the ways your mom and your dad have invested in your life. You're not so every right. not every parent's perfect mm-hmm. and not every story's, you know, stellar and sparkly and all that. But I just think about my folks and like I couldn't do enough for them mm-hmm. ever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. because of the way they put up with me <laughs> can never fully repay them. I mean, they get, yeah. I mean, can't yeah. you can't. So it's like, how can I help? What can I do? Right. And I think asking in prayer and individually, Lord, show me mm-hmm. how I can love him or love her well mm-hmm. uh, in a way that makes sense today, right. because that does change. Uh, their needs change and the focus changes. Mm-hmm. I think Susie's advice of just giving him time. If there's a big thing, a big decision has mm-hmm. to be made. Yeah. And Susie's overseeing finances, and she's dealing with the sale of a property out of state and all kinds of things. And she's on the phone a lot Mm -hmm. dealing with other things that her mom will never know about, Mm -hmm. but that need to happen. So she's just stepped in and filled the gaps where needed and where you can. Well, and I I know, too, that we have talked with people that have never had a good relationship with their parents. Yeah, that's, that's hard. You know, and... All I can say is pray for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, even if you're not able to step in and do things for them because they won't let you, the best thing you can give them is prayer. Yeah. So. So much wisdom, guys. Hey, love on your folks. You you only get one set. You're right. And it's easy just to be looking at your own stuff and be Mm -hmm. wrapped up in all that and forget that, you know, mom and dad are people too. Mm Mm-hmm. And again, they receive love in different ways. So ask God to give you wisdom. Mm -hmm. And they just step into it. And you learn as you go. It's just like growing up your kids, Mm -hmm. like building your relationship with each other. 
you're always in a new season you're always in a new place grow together mm-hmm. learn I together it. i love it yeah. you guys are so and we could we could talk more about oh, this yeah. and maybe in a future episode there's such a gift i mean i feel yes like we we have such the privilege we get to we get to hang out with them like this i know and get this wisdom all the time <laughs> and you know all, the listeners just got a taste exactly taste just of a it, taste but, of the fountain but, wisdom that you no, guys we're, are we're so thankful oh, for thank you, both. you yeah thank you we appreciate thankful. it yes. yes well keep up the great work and we just pray god continues to to give you guys strength and wisdom as you as you navigate this and for all those who are listening mm-hmm. um one practical thing you can do right now is if you if your parents are living why don't you call them Yes. Just exactly. call them right now. Like this is a reminder mm-hmm. that I, I want to be like Steve and Susie. I want to honor mm-hmm. my parents in that way and my thank in-laws them. in that way yeah. and thank them and care for them and just let them know, hey, I'm thankful for you. Mm-hmm. Um, not, they, they weren't perfect. No parent is. Right. But we still can can honor them and strive to build a relationship with them. And that's something God always honors. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we want to be like you guys when we grow up. So thank you again You're welcome. for being thank here you. and pray that your next 46 years are your best yet. That's yeah, right. Thanks. Exactly. We're looking forward to seeing <laughs> what kind of adventure that is. I know. Yes. Um, <laughs> and yeah, and thank amazing. you guys all for listening today. Do us a favor, share this episode. I promise there are people in your life who need, need to hear this and it could make a, a, a great multi-generational impact in families um, just by, by sharing this story. So thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time.